Now, you know it's Valentine's season, right? And Valentine's <laughs> is about love, and love is really all about the heart. And um, so we're going to have a conversation this morning on a nutrition segment. Um, Koku, I'm mm -hmm. just excited because we're talking heart <laughs> and we're talking love and all of those things. We're going to be talking about nutrition and your heart, all right? And so the conversation this morning is with Nanekia Van Dijk, um, who is a clinical dietitian. And she's going to help us to get into it. The kind of meals, the kind of foods that you need to eat that are good for you. Hmm. And okay, good morning. Hello, David. How good are morning. you? I'm doing excellent. And Fantastic. You? Very good. Thank you. That's Thank great. You. Hi, so yeah. well. We're looking forward to this discussion. Yeah. I suppose since the heart is, you know, our life, mm. anything that we consume could potentially affect it. Yes. So it's an important discussion for keeping Very. our hearts healthy. Um, all right. So we understand that, for instance, in the European region, the mm. average person consumes eight grams to 19 grams of salt per day yes which is much more than the recommended maximum of five grams wow and mm. we know that when it comes to blood pressure which again affects your heart hypertension salt is a big a culprit a huge aspect a of huge it. aspect of that talk to us about salt heart hypertension all of that and then we'll get into different food groups that we should be looking at okay so when it comes to salt um once you do consume high amounts of salt, it then tends to increase your blood pressure, which increases your risk of coronary, coronary heart disease. Mm -hmm. Okay, And coronary heart disease could literally affect your heart, which would affect the circulation of blood across your body. Okay. So it's very important that we watch the amount of salt that we eat. Mm. Considering the foods that are available on the market, the processed foods that we do consume, they tend to have a lot of salt in it. Okay. So we have to just be mindful of what we are choosing and making sure we read food labels mm. and all of that. Mm. And even if it's at home and we're preparing our own food, make sure that we take just a little bit of salt. So mm -hmm. according to the WHO, usually um, what they would recommend is that we take about uh, five milligrams. Okay. Yes, of salt. For the entire day. Give us give us a sense of what five milligrams looks like. Is it a teaspoon? It's Is it exactly? So it's less than a teaspoon of hey. salt. Wait, okay. For the on. entire day. Is that is that like <laughs> I'm eating my jollof and I want to just put a sprinkle of salt? Is that the five milligrams you're talking no. about? No. Oh. So that means across board from morning to evening, everything you are eating. Oh, then we all feel. <laughs> Because from what, think about it, almost everything we eat has yeah. some salt in it or yes. some sodium or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah, right. Um, but I think that also um, salt is something that's a quiet taste. So mm. what happens is that a lot of the times we find ourselves, um, you're born into a family and your mother cooks in a certain way and, that's and so the, the and taste that taste is what you gets to you so True. as soon as you don't have salt you're like, mm, mm. why are you so <laughs> food doesn't so have bland. salt yeah. you know meanwhile there are people that don't cook with salt at all mm -hmm. you know and the children love that food because that's so how as they soon, were brought up exactly so as soon as you add salt to that food you're like oh why is there so much salt so in this you know so wow. i think it's yeah but this is serious so mm, it is i'm just going through my mind like Everything you eat from morning to evening, yeah. and even for our kids, yes. kind of some of the things we give them mm -hmm. and snacks, exactly. all of that has salt or sodium in it. Yes, it does. Goodness, how do you even begin to cut back? Especially, like you said, with processed foods where it's already built in. Yes. Or if you're eating at a restaurant, you don't know, you really can't tell what, what else they're exactly using aside salt. Yes. If there's a flavor cube or something, you know. Exactly. So what we could do is, as I suggested initially, to try and read food labels as much as possible mm. and check how much sodium or salt is okay. in the product that we are consuming. Okay. okay. Also try and cut back on processed foods that have been that have a lot of salt, especially mm. when it comes to sardines, Ooh. tuna, canned foods. Canned foods oh, do tend wow. to have a lot yeah. of salt because of the brine process. Right. So we have to be mindful of that as hey, well Charlie. and try to cut back mm. on that. Mm. Hmm. Okay. And another thing is when we are cooking at home, instead of using salt as the main flavor factor in our cooking 
more natural spices should be included okay. and then we cut back on the sauce so that the food tastes good. So when you say natural okay. spices, what would you go for if you are avoiding salt or avoiding a lot of salt? What would you naturally go for? Okay. So I would go for thyme, turmeric, rosemary. Okay. Okay. We also have the basics, which are ginger and garlic, mm. which could make food taste really great as well. This Coriander. Would be a good experiment. Mm. To try so cooking much. with no salt whatsoever. Yeah. So, okay. so, 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 what, what is it really? I mean, what is it that is in salt that I, I do, I do realize that there's a historic and natural affinity for salt as a way of creating tasty like bringing food. out the flavor uh -huh. of but foods. but I, I don't know i mean it's just rock <laughs> so it brings out additional <laughs> flavors you, you know, know. i just I'm, I'm fascinated I by that though i mean because it's like if it's not there there's a, something, is something wrong is but wrong. you yes. can f you can f you can like you said you can spice, spice up, up you know in other ways that will not make you miss the salt. The salt yes. is not there. Right. Talk to us and about some other foods that can have an effect on our heart health, either positively or negatively. negatively. Okay. So when it comes to the positive aspect, we have to look at consuming whole grains. And with our Ghanaian diet, I'd say whole grains are something that we tend to consume very often. Okay. For example, bread, oats, whole wheat, okay. you know, unpolished rice, <laughs> which is the brown rice that we tend to eat sometimes. So it's, it's a good source of grains for mm. the body okay. as well as legumes legumes play a huge role as well and a mm. good source of protein for the body so for example the seeds and nuts that we tend to eat as well as beans mm. are very good okay on the positive side as well as fruits and vegetables mm. okay. never forget the fruits and vegetables <laughs> <laughs> it's very important so we have a wide variety of fruits in our Ghanaian diet mm. Mm. Orange, watermelon, pineapple, pawpaw, yeah. so many, very yeah. diverse. And when it comes to vegetables as well, because our stews are mainly vegetable-based mm. stews. Mm. Okay, so the contumery stew, the garden egg stew, mm. the okra that yeah. we eat. Yeah, alefu. Yeah, alefu, yeah, all, all of those. All of those. Yeah. those are very good as well. When it comes to the stews, for instance, yes, I mean, we do use a bit of oil in them. Yes. So there's got the vegetables, but there's also quite a bit of oil. How, what impact does that have? I mean, there's hmm. red oil or palm oil, yeah. then there's, you know, the vegetable oils as well. There's yes. coconut oil. There's, um, if you're making granite soup, there's an oil that will yes. derive from <laughs> that. <laughs> so talk to us about how those oils could affect our heart. Okay. So generally speaking about oils, what we are supposed to try as much as possible is try to avoid the saturated and trans fats. Okay. Okay. Those are what we tend to find in a lot of foods that we eat. For example, the palm oil, the um, processed foods that we eat tend to have uh, trans mm. fats, so mainly processed fats, I would say. So okay. something like margarine. Okay. Yes. Because it's hydrogenated, it tends to end up as a trans fat. Mm. So what we are supposed to do is try and choose healthier fats, so okay. unsaturated fats, which such as the coconut oil, okay. which is a monounsaturated fat, is good. Um, when we eat avocados, avocados mm. have healthy oils. And we tend to find these oils as well in fish. Okay. okay. But when it comes to cooking, which was the main point, mm. let's try and use maybe something that, like sunflower oil, okay. olive oil, canola oil, any of these options are good. Okay. But we just have to watch how we're cooking as well. Mm. Especially when you tend to heat these oils, it changes the nature of the chemical structure of the oil. Mm. So we have to just be mindful of that as well and try and cook on a low heat and not use too much oil as mm. well. So okay. deep frying should be less, as much as possible. As possible, okay. Now, tomorrow is Valentine's Day yes. and you're already in a beautiful red top, you see. <laughs> she came ready. Be, she yes. came ready. Yes. Red <laughs> tomorrow is going to be a lot of chocolate flying around. Yes. I mean, I'm sure Kweku David has already bought a basket of chocolate for someone, mm. right? As we eat <clears throat> all this chocolate, <clears throat> yeah. sometimes we're told, oh, your chocolate is good for your heart, especially dark chocolate, but there's a lot of milk chocolate in the system, there's white chocolate, there's yes. chocolate with all kinds of nuts and things in it. Is chocolate good for us? And if yes, which type? So, good point. Chocolate is definitely good, but the dark chocolate is the good type. 
the one that okay. doesn't taste nice and sweet and milky. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. um, chocolate does contain antioxidants that are very good for the heart. Mm. It tends to lower blood pressure as well okay. from studies that have shown. And so what we should do since tomorrow is going to be all about chocolate is try and choose dark chocolate and maybe an unsweetened version. Mm. However, there are other chocolates that have artificial sugars in it. Yeah. So that might be a better option compared to actual glucose or sugar in the chocolate. Okay. So, yes. All right. So, so we'll once again, we just have to read the packaging as much as we can. Okay. Yes. And then moderation. And then moderation. <laughs> Thank so, you. So, I have a question. Is there anything wrong with regular milk chocolate? And why? Okay. So yeah, because every day dark, dark chocolate, every day dark chocolate, every day dark chocolate. What about the regular milk chocolate that we is this nice? So what makes the regular milk uh -huh. chocolate nice uh -huh. is the fact that there's a lot sugar more milk. fat and sugar. Oh. In hmm. and yes, and with that one you're not getting all coke. Obviously, it's milk chocolate, yes. so. Usually 60 to 40 percent, mm, so that okay. is the actual cocoa, cocoa. Okay. and the rest is just milk. Um, so, still on the dark chocolate. Still on the dark <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> dark chocolate is the winner. Yes. Yeah. The darker the chocolate, the better for your heart. The better for your heart. Okie dokie. Yes. Right. Okay. Fantastic. Um, I think the last question I, I would want to ask before we, 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 you take leave of us is um, about drinks. drinks. You know, because we often, when we look at nutrition we often look at foods but we don't talk that much about drinks yeah. i've heard the saying don't drink your calories mm -hmm. um, i don't know what your take is on that okay so when it comes to don't drink your calories it generally means that when we look at these sugar sweetened beverages once there's an amount of sugar in there it adds up to the amount of calories we consume because mm. sugar equals energy and how do we get energies mainly from the calories that we consume yeah. yes so if we're eating a diet that already has calories and we are trying to maybe watch our weight stay healthy not necessarily trying to avoid drinking your calories would be a good way to go mm. okay. basically okay. and with Sorry. drinking as well when it comes to heart health what we have to look at is alcohol mm -hmm. okay so mm. we have to try as much Let's as possible. <laughs> Tomorrow, a lot of champagne maybe yes. flowing. Oh, 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 oh yeah. To no, <laughs> champagne, <laughs> wine, some wine, yeah, yeah some yeah. cocktail. Yeah, or oh, cocktail then ah. wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to try as much as possible to limit our intake of okay. alcohol. Okay. okay. So there are recommended amounts for both women and men that differ depending on the alcoholic beverage that you're going for okay. so we have to try as much as possible to limit it in order to improve our heart health and as well mm. when you say limit be a little bit, a little bit more specific yes. for us yeah. that's why i was saying there are specific quantities yeah. mm -hmm. for, yes for, for both gender okay. as well yes okay. and, and, they are, and they are different they are mm -hmm. different depending okay. on the alcoholic beverage so okay. how much you drink a beer is not the same mm -hmm. amount as that you drink for a spirit yeah. or a glass of yeah. wine as yeah. well so mm -hmm. it varies yeah. nice one All yes right. how do people get in touch with you okay so you can find me on linkedin as mm -hmm. nana ikea van dyke right. yes or on instagram as diet chit chat oh diet nice. chit chat yes All right super Great. It's been a good chit chat. Yeah, it has. It, it has is. been. 